Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to a Saturday afternoon or late afternoon episode of Ted's Boo Cellar with me your most gracious host Ted. Welcome to the premier alcohol review show here on YouTube and I hope I'm finding you all in a good state of affairs and if I'm not then I hope things improve for you very very soon. And now I'd sort of quickly like to give a shout out to a friend of mine called Fran. They had birthday celebrations recently. I was unable to attend because I had already said that I was going to be going out for drinking with some colleagues that night. So apologies that I didn't turn up for that. So that's on me. Now, I hope I can surprise you all with today's drink because this is a drink from our old friends at Unbarred Brewery. And it's not a drink that I've reviewed before, but it is a drink that he used to make and then they brought it back recently. So I'm interested to see what this is like because this, as you can see here, is 3Bs, which is their Brighton Beach Belgian IPA. It has ingredients here of water, barley, wheat, hops, yeast, and it's brewed and canned at the Unbar Brewery itself. And it's vegan as well, actually, this one, so that's quite interesting. And the description they gave of it on the Unbarred website as well is that they are just generally excited to have it back. There was a concept, or at least the concept for 3Bs was designed by Unbarred Brewery's Jordan, who is their head brewer. And it basically goes into the size of the equipment they use and sort of how they burn down some of the ingredients to put in the beer. So it says here, for example, with the 50 litre equipment, Jordan and Rob took a metal pot and gas burner down to the beach with water, malts and hops. Steeping the grains and then boiling the wort, adding a touch of Brighton, they used seaweed from the beach as a fining agent. So I think that's the main thing that's really kind of setting this out from the other stuff that Unbarred have made in the past and that could give it a bit of an interesting edge so I'm interested to see how it influences the taste mainly. What I will say is that the can doesn't really give much of an impression of that's kind of the thing that you're getting in for is a seaweedy beer like I only really knew that by reading into the beer on the website but here I will say it is an interesting design of a can. The contrast between the red and black writing against the yellow background with the red and black sort of art design is really nice so I do quite like the way that the can looks. So I'll give the design of the can honestly like a 9 out of 10. I just wish there was a bit more of a description of the beer itself on the can but generally speaking I can't really complain too much so it looks nice. Yeah I'll give it a 9 out of 10. It's very artsy but in a simple way and it's got some colours that really contrast quite nicely against each other so that's quite nice but anyway let's have ourselves a quick snifter <sighs> hopefully our first impressions are good oh wow it's a very strong nose but um no it doesn't have a stage welcome too much to be fair it's quite a straightforward nose it does have kind of a sea air kind of after smell to it And then it kind of smells a little bit like a Cinco hops kind of beer, but no, it's just a very nice, straightforward nose. It's quite airy and refreshing, so yeah, I'll give it like a 7 out of 10 in the can. Again, it's just not got a lot of room to breathe, but what character is there is very positive, and it's very flavourful. So let's pour it into the glass and see what our first proper impressions are like once the beer has had a bit of room to breathe in. Let's see here looks almost like a hazy IPA in terms of the head and the colour so it's quite an interesting hue to it but it looks quite nice so let's give it a quick snifter in the glass where it's got more air to breathe yeah a little bit nicer in the glass I'd say it's probably getting on for like an 8 or so out of 10 it's just got a little bit more room to breathe you can really immerse yourself in the flavour a bit more the same flavours that are in the nose in the can are pretty much the same ones you get here it's just again it's just got generally more character so I'd say 8 or 8.25 out of 10 for the nose in the glass but as always we won't know what this properly is like until we've had our palate cleanser so <clears throat> here we go every time I have the palate cleanser for some reason I've noticed that I accidentally splash myself in the eye but didn't do it this time I just splashed myself in the face And then on to the most important part of the video, which is to see what this sucker tastes like. So to everyone at home, I hope you have a great rest of the weekend and bottoms up. Weird one. Um, not much a fan of the initial taste. 
The off. Actually, I'm not sure about this one. Hmm. So the initial flavour hasn't got a lot of carrot. Um, it has got this sort of like hoppy sort of bitterness to it that I quite like. The end of the flavour, it's quite interesting. It's sort of very hazy. It's a little bit sweet, a little bit bitter. It's just a very simple, nice, balanced flavour. But then there's this aftertaste after you've swallowed it all down, once it's sat in your taste buds for a few seconds, that I'm really not sure about. It kind of almost feels like a kind of a seaweedy kind of aftertaste, which obviously kind of I'm not surprised by considering the way that they made this. But um, I don't know. I just think I'm just not sure about the aftertaste. I think that's the biggest weakness for me. The texture is okay, and could do with being a little bit smoother towards the end. But the main through line of the flavour is nice. You've got this kind of sort of slightly bittery IPA kind of flavour is the main through line. And then you've kind of got a sort of a Belgian sweet haze undercutting everything that kind of adds a bit of balance. And then you've kind of got this slight sort of tart tang overcoating everything a little bit as well. And then the aftertaste of that kind of seaweedy aspect does add a really interesting contrast to it. But I don't know if that kind of flavour really mixes particularly well with the Belgian beer flavours you've got going on here. Yeah, I just, I think, I like the idea, but I'm just not sure if I would have used Belgian beer yeast to go along with this. I think, obviously, my favourite types of beers in the world are Belgian ones, but I'm just not sure about it here. I think the flavours individually and of themselves are all good, it's just I think that they do clash with each other a little bit, particularly towards the end. So I will say... This probably isn't quite 475 in terms of the price, which is what I paid for it from the Seven Cellars alcohol store. But I think it is still good, generally, and I think the flavours that are here are nice, and the concept of it is great, and I wish more breweries would do stuff like this, but I just think the... I'm just not sure. I just think the flavour of the yeast that they use doesn't really contrast nicely against the flavours from the aftertaste, but that being said... It's still generally a good drinking experience, and the flavour is simple enough that I think that most people can kind of get their heads around it and enjoy it. But I'll give it a, uh, I'll give it like a six out of ten. I do like it. I just think it's one of the probably the weak ones I've had personally from Unbarred. I do prefer other beers from them. I tend to prefer their more sweet and tart beers and they're more creamy chocolatey ones as well so like their stouts and like their sours I really like but this it's not one of their best but I think I can definitely see what they were going for with this and generally I do kind of like it I do think it's a good beer and I would recommend it but I'd just say go into it with a blank slate so that you know you're not surprised too much I guess I would say but generally speaking it is actually quite nice so yeah, leave a like, comment, share and subscribe down below if you enjoyed this video. As well as that, comment down below if you have any suggestions for future beers I should review as well as any other video formats I should look into. As well as that, and if you're interested, I'll leave the links to all my social medias in the video description down below. And on top of that, until next time, have fun, stay safe for whatever you're doing, don't do anything I wouldn't do, wash your hands, drink responsibly, know your limits, and I'll see you guys at the bar next time on Ted's Booze Cellar. Bye-bye for now.